اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین خاتم النبیین ابل قاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم و آل طیبین الطاہرین المعصومین علیہ الصلاۃ والسلام و لعنت الدائمۃ علی آدائہم اجمعین من یوم عداوتہم الى یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم جمیع و رحمۃ اللہ وی آر سیلیبریٹنگ دا منتھ آف رجب این ان دس منتھ وی آر سیلیبریٹنگ دی ولادت آف علی بن بطالب علیہ السلاۃ والسلام تھرٹینتھ آف رجب فرائیڈے دا تھرٹینتھ آف رجب از دی ولادت آف علی بن بطالب علیہ السلام and he was born in the 30th year of uh, Amul Fil or um, in the Islamic calendar we say usually uh, that he was born uh, 10 years before Be'asad of the Holy Prophet So the Holy Prophet was 30 years of age when Imam Ali Islam was born and he is born to uh, Imran uh, or Abu Talib famously known as and uh, Fatima binti Asad Salamullahi alayhima um, May the salutations of Allah be upon both of his parents um, Both had four sons and one or two daughters Some say one daughter, some say two Imam Ali Islam had two sisters um, Now his oldest brother was um, Talib Second one was Aqil third brother was Jafar and Imam Ali Islam was the youngest of the four brothers and between the four brothers there is a 10 year gap so each one was 10 years younger than the other so the oldest brother was same age as the Holy Prophet and uh, uh, the Holy Prophet uh, and Imam Ali Islam, they were first cousins their fathers were brothers so Abu Talib and Abdullah Abdullah was younger brother of Hazrat Abu Talib So Hazrat Abdullah is his younger brother to uh, Hazrat Abu Talib Now both of them uh, were very close and um, you can divide the life of Imam Ali into five parts. The first is from Vilada to Bi'sat, that's 10 years. And then from Bi'sat to migration, Hijrat to Medina, that's another about 13 years. So he was 23 when they migrated and then from um, Hijrat migration to Medina till the death of the Holy Prophet. So that's another uh, 10, 10 and a half years you can say. And then the third portion is after the Holy Prophet uh, till his Khilafat. So that's about 25 years. That's the longest duration of his life out of the four portions. And the four, fifth part is his own Khilafat, his own rule when he was in control of the government, he was in reign. And that's four years and nine months. And that's the, the five durations of his life. And we'll talk about, we'll try and talk about in this series, each one of the five portions of his life. The first one is first, his Viladat. His Viladat according to all um, Shia Sunni big historians um, he was born in inside Kaaba inside the uh, the main house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala main house of God in Makkah in Masjid al-Haram inside Kaaba Wolida fi Jawfil Kaaba so all big historians like uh, Mas'udi and uh, the uh, Usul uh, Kafi and all of her uh, traditional books, Hadith books, history books, Shia Sunni, big books, mentioned that he that he was born inside Kaaba, inside the house of God. Uh, and the famous story is that his mother, um, uh, Fatima binti Asad, uh, she When she felt that it was the time for the birth of Imam al-Islam, she left her house, the house of Abu Talib, and she came to Kaaba, and while she was doing tawaf, 
she heard a sound. Ya Fatima, udkhuli, o Fatima, enter the house. So, Rukna Yamani, there are four corners of Kaaba. Uh, Rukna Yamani is where the, the corner is facing towards Yemen, towards the south. That opened up and you can still see the marks. Even today, after 14 centuries have gone by, every year you see that the marks of the entrance of Imam Ali Islam's mother on Kaaba and Rukna Yamani are still apparent. So every year they fix it, they will repair it. But on the 13th of Rajab, at the time of Fajr, it opens up. And so you can see that the four walls of Kaaba, uh, three look alike and the fourth one is different. So the fourth wall is different and that's the place of the entrance of Rukna Yamani. Uh, and if you look at the four corners, the corner where Hajri Aswad is, just the corner before that while doing Tawaf, is known to be Rukna Yamani. And when Imam Ali was asked who is better by Sasa ibn Suhan, you or Isa, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, so he said, uh, as for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Holy Prophet that mention the bounties of the Lord to you. And I'm not saying it because I'm better than Isa, because I'm boasting about it or I'm, um, uh, uh, you know, I have a pride or I'm arrogant, but because it is a gift of Allah upon me, so I mention it that I'm better than Jesus and I'm uh, Imam Ali salam. And why? Because he said, when it was a time of the birth of Isa salam, Maryam bint Imran salam alayha, was inside Baytul Muqaddas in Jerusalem, uh, Jerusalem, and uh, she heard Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sent his message to her. Ya Maryam, hada baytul ibadah, lal baytul vilada. This is a house of worship and not the house of uh, birth. Please leave. Fakhruji. So please leave Baytul Muqaddas. And he, Imam Ali says that my mother was outside Kaaba. So she heard from inside Kaaba a sound, Ya Fatima, udkhuli, O Fatima, come inside. And Imam Ali said this was the comparison between him and Jesus that Allah SWT called his mother inside Kaaba because of him, because of Imam Ali Nevertheless, so this is the first part. He was born and the three days he was inside Kaaba, his mother remained inside because the door was locked and closed and no one could go inside, but the wall had cracked open and she went inside and gave birth to Imam Ali and uh, uh, the wall was closed for three days. When again on the fourth day, uh, she left the Kaaba, the Holy Prophet وسلم, came to receive his aunt Fatima bint Asad um, and Imam Ali salam, and the Holy Prophet picked him up and uh, kissed him and uh, um, his aunt had said to him that my son has not opened his eyes for three days. And as soon as Imam Ali salam, came to the arms of the Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet said, uh, you have specified, you have chosen me for your look, for your glance. You have now opened your eyes to look at me first. You did not wish to see anything before looking at me. I have specified you for the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the knowledge that I have get. You know, the wahi meaning, the revelation, it is for you. Uh, so that's the beginning of the, the, the life of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, in this world. Um, we do believe that the holy personalities like the Holy Prophet Imam Ali alayhi salam, Fatima Tazara salam alayhi, Imam Hassan alayhi, Hussain alayhi salam, they were created before the creation of the heavens and the earth. So they were the first creation of Allah. I don't want to go into that, but I'm, I'm going to talk about the life of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. Now that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, picked him up and uh, uh, gave him his tongue, so the Imam alayhi salam, Lick the tongue of the Holy Prophet and he said, uh, Ya Rasulullah, if you say that I will recite even Hafiz Rajabi Bursi and others, um, Shia Sunni scholars, some of the Sunni scholars have also mentioned, he said, if you allow me, I will recite Tawrayt. If you allow, then I will recite Zabur or Injil. Or if you allow, then I will even recite Quran. Quran wasn't, the revelation hadn't started yet. So he recited those books and the Holy Prophet said, you recite those books better than the prophets who were given those books. So now this is the first part and as a child 
um, he was named Haydar by his mother um, and Zayd and Ali by his father and uh, hence he is famously known by the name Ali because that was a name given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah gave his name to him Ali -Islam. so he was a name in the Holy Quran in Surah number 2 chapter 2 and uh, verse number 255 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ayat al -Kursi, that Allah is Ali Azim, the high and the great so that's the name uh, you know there's a poetry that the name of Imam Ali al-Islam was uh, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gave the name to Imam Ali al-Islam. Uh, so he gave the name Ali to Imam Ali. So Haydar is basically the attacking lion in, in Arabic. This is his early childhood and he was very close to the Holy Prophet and it was the Prophet who had been married to Khadijah al-Kubra salam alayha at the age of 25, at the age of 30, when he did not have any children, he asked his uncle Abu Talib to say that, Oh uncle, I want your son Ali. And therefore he was an adopted son to the Holy Prophet um, and Khadija, salam alayha. Uh, the Holy Prophet wasallam, and Khadija, they were bringing him up. In that time, he was not only just beloved to the Holy Prophet, but he was uh, very loving person to the Holy Prophet uh, so he loved the Holy Prophet very dearly and and hence you see in Khaybar the Holy Prophet says tomorrow I'll give the banner to a man who does not escape from the the battlefield he is firm um, um, uh, when he's fighting the enemies uh, uh, Allah and his messenger love him and he loves Allah and the messenger of Allah. So the love was specified from Allah and the Holy Prophet for Imam Ali and Imam Ali al -Islam dearly, truly loved the Almighty God and the Holy Prophet So therefore, there was a very close bond between the Holy Prophet and Imam Ali Now, as a child, in the first 10 years, he was in the house of the Holy Prophet and it was the Holy Prophet who would uh, escape from Mecca. Mecca of that time was not the ideal place to live in because the Arabs had idols they would bring to Mecca when they would come for pilgrimage. Pilgrimage was started from Hazrat Ibrahim a. So whenever the Arabs came to, to Mecca, they would bring idols with them. They would bring all sorts of uh, uh, things with them like alcohol and there was drinking and adultery, fornication going on in Mecca. People would bury their daughters alive and the Holy Prophet وسلم, did not like any of that. So therefore he would go to the cave called Hira, Ghar Hira, uh, which is on the outskirts of uh, Mecca. Um, and he would go up to, uh, into the mountain and uh, uh, pray, you know, go into seclusion, going to Etikaf for, for days. And sometimes he was there for only a few days, three days. Sometimes he was there for longer times, you know, like a month or even 40 days. And it was Khadija al-Kubra and Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib who would quickly go up to the mountain and uh, take food for the Holy Prophet, you know, food and water uh, outside Mecca. So they would walk all the way up to Hera uh, the cave and they would bring food for him. So Imam Ali Islam had shown his love even from early childhood. So he would come with the Khadija al-Kubra. And he says in, uh, in his words that uh, do not compare me to yourself because I prayed behind the Holy Prophet. When no one knew about the prayers, I stood behind him or next to him because right behind the Holy Prophet was Khadija al-Kubra and he was Imam Ali al-Islam who was standing right uh, you know, beside the Holy Prophet on the right hand side, a little bit behind him, praying in Mecca, Masjid al-Haram, and so therefore he was very close to him. During that time, Imam Ali al-Islam was observing everything that the Holy Prophet was doing. So he was watching out for the Holy Prophet. And he was being trained by his parents as well to look after the Holy Prophet, to, to protect the Holy Prophet in the future when he announces the... So the protection 
of the Holy Prophet was the responsibility of five personalities. His grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, um, his mother, Amina, um, his uncle Abu Talib, his uncle Hamza, and his aunt Fatima bint Asad. And one by one, when he was small, he was, uh, you know, he lost his father first. Uh, some say just before his birth, some say just after his birth. A month or two after his birth, he lost his father. Some say two months before his birth. Nevertheless, his mother died when he was only about six, and then his grandfather when he was eight. So the Holy Prophet was being now looked after by his uncle, Abu Talib, and his aunt, Fatima bint Asad. So the Holy Prophet ﷺ was very close to his uncle and aunt. And as he became older, when he was 30, his cousin was born, Imam Ali Islam. He always called him a brother because he was his cousin. But he also had brought him up. During this time, when Imam Ali Islam was being looked after by his uncle, he, he is a, Imam Ali Islam was being looked after by his cousin. He uh, also was being continuously told by his father to, to look, uh, look after the Holy Prophet. So from very early age, uh, not only that he loved the Holy Prophet, but he was also uh, learning to defend him, learning to protect him. And as an infallible, he does not le need any training or uh, learning like the normal people. So his learning is not like me and you because he's infallible. He is especially he has special knowledge he is infallible so but he was uh, you know he his learning is different so his grand his father and his mother knew that this child is not a, an ordinary child they knew just like the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ali ibn is also special now that he became 10 the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam announced that he is the messenger Many times people say, why did the Holy Prophet not announce earlier that he's a messenger? Because Jesus announced in the cradle. What was he lacking? He wasn't lacking anything. The society was lacking a protector. So you need protection. So it was Abu Talib who was providing him with uh, stability and uh, support um, of the, you know, from the clan, from the tribe. And he was Khadija. Who was providing him with the financial support, and it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who was providing him with the physical um, support or uh, assistance and protection and intellectual support. It was Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, who was uh, later announced by the Holy Prophet that he I'm the city of knowledge, and Ali is its gate. So it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who was going to protect and deliver the intellectual message of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so this was from very early age from the age of 10 when the Holy Prophet announced um, when he announced that he's a messenger Imam Ali Wasallam was only 10 we'll in the next session talk about um, how he went out of his way to protect the Holy Prophet but during those first 10 years he went out uh, with the Holy Prophet, you know, when the Holy Prophet was grazing the sheep many times or in his business deals and in his travels for, for business and in his dealing with the people in, in, in Mecca. Ali ibn Abi Talib was always present. He was there with the Holy Prophet and he says himself that I used to walk uh, with the Holy Prophet, how a baby camel walks with the mother. The beauty here is that all, you know, many, many animals, their children always remain with them. Like a goat, like the cows, calf, the goat's kid, um, you know, and many different animals like horses and or the calf walks with the mother. But Imam Ali Islam has given the example in the parable that I was with the Holy Prophet like a baby camel. Baby camel remains with the mother. The beauty about the baby camel is that it does not ever cross the mother, does not go, you know, go forward. It always remains behind and walks onto the step and step by step behind the mother. 
and that's the beauty of Ali ibn Abi Talib with all other companions they either went too far ahead they remained too far behind or they went right or left from away from the Holy Prophet uh, but it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who always remained behind the Holy Prophet and followed him foot by you know step by step and did not ever uh, exceed the Holy Prophet did not ever uh, disobey or, or uh, betray the Holy Prophet or ever uh, disrespect the Holy Prophet in any way. He honored the Holy Prophet in the best way possible and he never called him father or brother or no. He always called him Ya Rasulullah or Messenger of Allah. So he always showed that utmost respect because he was teaching all others to follow his way of respecting the Holy Prophet So you can see in his early life from very early age that he showed uh, the best respect to the Holy Prophet In the first 10 years also when the Holy Prophet uh, has not yet announced that he is a messenger of Allah um, but in his business deals and in his um, um, his conduct with his uncles and the rest of the family members, you see Ali ibn Abi Talib follow the Holy Prophet in every way possible, in every uh, methodology that the Holy Prophet was laying down. So the, the way he treated his uncles, like, um, you know, he showed them respect, his conduct, his smile, his, uh, you know, the akhlaq of the Holy Prophet So Ali ibn Abi Talib has uh, was with the Holy Prophet from very early age. So we believe that his religion is same as the Holy Prophet and the Holy Prophet وسلم, did not follow anyone else. He followed Islam. He believed in one God from, uh, from, you know, from his creation, from his birth, from early life and likewise Ali ibn Talib. And this is a beauty that even our Sunni brothers admit. They say that all Sahaba عنهم, were uh, anhum. May Allah be pleased with them. But Ali ibn Abi Talib is Karram Allahu Wajhahu. Allah has uh, honored his face. Karram Allahu Wajhahu. Allah has honored his face. What is the honor? They say that he never bowed down to an idol. He never prostrated to an idol. Even before Islam. Even when the Holy Prophet announced that he is a messenger. Even before that, Ali ibn Abi Talib, like the Holy Prophet, never prostrated to uh, you know, he never performed a prostration to an idol. So he was always a muahid. Um, and that's what we believe, that all imams and prophets are infallible. Not only just the imams, but even the forefathers are all uh, muahid. They all are monotheists. They all believe in one God and they never bow down to idols. So it was Ali ibn Abi Talib who, from very early age, uh, had true beliefs, true infallibility, the knowledge, ilm al you know, the special knowledge that the Imams and the infallibles have. So, and you can see uh, in his early life all of those uh, beauties, all of those uh, practices and virtues uh, where you see the Holy Prophet says that Ali. Minni bi manzillati ra'sa min al-jasad. Ali is to me like the head is to body. What does that imply? You know, the head to body is like we all have similar bodies. No one can recognize anyone through body. It is the, through the face you recognize someone. So the Holy Prophet sallallahu is implying that if you want to understand me, then you need to understand me through my brother Ali. He will introduce me to you. He will tell you who I really am. He truly understands me. He is... My head, he, head is the way of recognition. You recognize me through my brother Ali. You know, your five senses, four of them are on your head. Um, your eyes, your nose, your uh, tongue, your ears are all on the head. And only hands are outside. So 80% of your senses are in the head. And 80% of the recognition of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is through Imam Ali ﷺ. And only 20% through other personalities. So it is very important. In the next session, we'll inshallah go into the more details about the second phase of his life, which is from the 
uh, 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 announcement of the Holy Prophet, the proclamation of the Holy Prophet وسلم, of his prophethood uh, until migration, the difficult time that he saw in Mecca and how Imam Ali Salam, what role did he play? We'll talk about that in the next session. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ